you need to know that God loves you. Get ready. Today's show is going to bring you hope. Well, hello and welcome to the Strong Tower Mental Health Podcast. I am your host, Heidi Mortensen. I am so excited to be here with me. I am welcoming my guest, Colette Tope. Her and I have actually been partners with podcasting for a couple years, and she has been such an inspiration to me. And I'm really excited to have her on, very honored to have her on. Um, She is a mighty woman of God that does ministry with her husband. She's written a lot of books. Um, I would say maybe over 50. I'm probably getting that number wrong. Uh, But Colette Toach, um, her last name is spelled T-O-A-C-H. And I'm really excited to have her come on to talk about the prophetic. So welcome, Colette. Hi there, everybody. Yeah, we have quite a journey together, don't we, Heidi? I've watched both of our podcasts grow and God use us both in such an incredible ways. And it's kind of crazy, excuse the pun, that we're bringing together (laughs) the subject of mental health and the prophetic. I mean, when you reached out to me, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad that somebody's finally tackling the subject. Yeah, because it's it's something that I was, when I started to learn about the supernatural and I learned about prophetic, I was like, there's something with mental health here, but it's not being talked about in the church and it's not no. being talked about in 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 the the office or a uh, mental yeah. health office. Even it's actually kind of discouraged because yeah. I don't think they really understand what that means. And so it's one of these things that I think we need to get more educated on. Yeah. Um, but before we begin, I was wondering, can you just let everybody know who you are and a little bit about yourself? Because you have this beautiful <laughs> accent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Craig and I, we're originally from South Africa. We uh, we left South Africa in 1998 to go into full-time ministry together. So we celebrated 26 years this year in full-time ministry. And in that time, God had us focus really not just on the five-fold ministry, but on spiritual family. This is the nucleus, and Heidi, you totally relate to this. This is the nucleus of where change and trauma and healing all takes place. It's actually in the nucleus of the family. And the Lord started showing Craig and I from the very beginning, because, you know, we're big advocates of deliverance. We're advocates of inner healing. But he took me right back to the nucleus of it. And he said, Colette, most trauma, most hurt takes place within the home. And if you really want to change my church, I mean, really bring healing then you need to go right back to the beginning. So what we did is we established ministry centers, really large ministry centers. And we brought people into our home. That is how Craig and I actually began our ministry. And we had one in Switzerland, in South Africa, and in San Diego, and in Mexico. And we would stay in these centers and have people in our space. And we saw miracles take place. You know, when you walk people through trauma, through deliverance around the dinner table in the kitchen, take them through processes whereby they sometimes relive events of the past, but with a happy ending, with God and the Holy Spirit in the middle of it, in a family environment, I was astounded and quite surprised because we were just doing what was in us to do, right? I didn't know it was mental health. I didn't know we were doing counseling. I didn't know we were doing deliverance. We were just loving on God's people. And, you know, what do you know? We saw people get healed of physical sicknesses and diseases because why? They stem from trauma, right? And then just even those hurts from the past, there were times I didn't even need to lay hands. This is the craziest thing is that I found a solution that was permanent. And when the Holy Spirit is in charge of it, I came to see the beauty of even how he blends our process, our trauma, and the call of, of that he's put on our lives and how they're a blend for what he's called us to do. And I want to say this, even before we get into it, nothing has been wasted. Oh, come on. Not a hurt, not a wound, not a bad experience. All of it has purpose. And if, child of God, if you're listening to this, if, we, if you can just tune your ear into that before we continue, that 
nothing was wasted. Even the bad things that happened to you, that all things not only can work together for good, but will work together for good. If you could embrace your process, your journey, what you've gone through and embrace the beauty that it's brought out of the ashes, then you're in a very good place to embrace your call by the end of this podcast. Come on. You are literally speaking out the last like three or four podcasts that I've done where I'm talking about <laughs> attachment and the, the healing that needs to happen, that that's the way that God designed us was his face was to our face. Like you're being Jesus to them in the home, in the midst of trauma. And that's yeah. like how healing just happens because there's attachment. There's yes. the healing is happening from a healthy attachment with you and your husband. Mm -hmm. And so it's the deliverance just naturally is able to happen. Oh my gosh, that is. <laughs> I love, I love that you give language for what God just told us to do. You know, it's kind of crazy in the last couple of years, the Lord's actually connected us with some incredible psychologists, Christian wow. anointed psychologists. And we explain our process and then they give language for everything we did. And I'm like, you know, I'm kind of glad that I didn't know this before I started because now I feel intimidated. <laughs> I, well, we just did what was in us to do. What, and what's so, what's beautiful is that the fact that you didn't talk to a psychologist before or have language for it, the Holy Spirit led you, which yeah. is exactly what I'm talking about, that this is the way God designed us. So Amen. what you're talking about is, is literally not something from a textbook. It's from the Lord. It's from the word of God. It's from the Holy Spirit. And this is why psych, like psychologists and why there's data and research coming with what the word of God says and our neuro and neuroscience. So you're, it's you're literally all over living, you. yeah, you're living out neuroscience and it's beautiful. I love that you're bringing this together, Heidi. There's been way too much of a divide between the study of the mind, the understanding of trauma and our calling and deliverance. We've separated these things, but yet all of them play a part in creating our spirit and our soul DNA. Mm -hmm. And you can't just cut out one piece of ourselves and embrace one. And, and we've seen that. I mean, we, we're talking about the prophetic, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you just embrace your calling, but you don't look at the trauma and recognize the process that you've gone through to get there, you're not fully embracing your process. <laughs> On the other hand, I find a lot of those who are prophetic, because they face so much trauma, they focus so much on the trauma, trying to get rid of the trauma, trying to get rid of the emotions and feelings yeah. that they forsake the call. They get yeah. so wound up in their trauma that they don't embrace the call that God's put on their life. They don't work through the trauma towards the call of God that will take them higher. Because the trauma, and it's going to be a little unpopular for the prophetic. The trauma is the doorway towards the prophetic. Come on. It's the passage that will lead you to your destiny. Isn't that crazy that God would use trauma to accelerate our process? But can we be honest? Would we really go willingly? Would we be shaped any other way? How traumatic was it for the children of Israel to leave Egypt, to leave everything? Yeah, I want to get rid of slavery. I want to get rid of slavery until we don't have any leeks, no garlic, no meat, no familiarity, and we're out in the middle of nowhere. Then suddenly that, un that, that discomfort makes us want to run back. And so God puts us in positions that are traumatic. They are traumatic because without the traumatic circumstances, we wouldn't go into the wilderness. Wow. And the wilderness is what we need to then be able to hear from him. And that pain is what actually brings out the purpose. Come I mean, on. This, this is so, okay. So I want to just explain to our viewers, one of the biggest reasons why I love Colette is that she, she is so encouraging and she just, she's like this natural pulling out the gold. And sometimes it's like, am I ready? Do I want that? And it's like, <laughs> God will be patient with you. So we, and one of the reasons why I also, why I called you was to talk about how so many people who are struggling with mental health issues actually have a call of God on their life. They yes. think that they're crazy and they think that there's something wrong with them and that they actually, God is actually calling them into something. But the other piece mm. of it is where 
I think mental health therapists can get scared, scared is that we can't just have people saying, I'm, I am the called into, you know, called into ministry and they're really still really sick and Mm -hmm. they're just like going into ministry. So I'm wondering if you could kind of talk about this, this calling where we think that there's something crazy within us, but God's actually Mm. calling us into something. Let's put these two in two separate boxes because they're definitely two extremes. And as you work with, as we work with prophetic people, I definitely see both extremes. So I know exactly what you're talking about. God is found in the wilderness. That's where Jesus faced his temptation, but it's also where the angels came to minister. Elijah, the angels came to assist him where? In the wilderness. Where did he experience a still small voice? In the wilderness. That's why I said our trauma is a doorway towards the wilderness. The the wilderness invites the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let's get a little real here. Um, I remember when I was going through a really crushing uh, time in my marriage. Um, Listen, you don't do 26 years of full-time ministry. I mean, I was, what, 22 when we went into full-time ministry with two little kids. Um, You know, you're you're sitting under a, a spiritual father that you know, had some ways about him that ended up putting a lot of pressure on our marriage. And it got really ugly for a while there. And I was hurt. I was broken. All my wounds were coming up. All my trauma was coming up. And I I felt like I was going crazy. And I'm like, but Lord, I'm meant to be healing your people. I'm I'm meant to be the example. And here I am falling apart. And he said to me, exactly. He said, Every time you hurt, every time you feel pain, he said, instead of going to the flesh, instead of going to your self-pity, instead of weeping about your pain, I want you to put me in that place. I want you to run into my presence and connect to my heart. And it was tough. I I remember some nights, I hope you guys don't mind me getting real, but I, I have really no problem being transparent. There were some nights when Craig and I got into such a fight and it was like two o'clock in the morning. And I, I was so frustrated. I just, I'm like, Lord, I'm done. I want to leave this house. I didn't want to be here. And I'd, I'd slam the door and I'd go to the lounge and I'd just sit there alone. And, and I would just say, Jesus, Jesus, in this moment, I need you. I need to feel your love right now because I don't feel your love. I need to be better right now. And when I did that, I felt his arms around me. And something miraculous began to happen through that. Every fight we had, every time I felt, you know, like I wasn't seen or I, I didn't get the, the needs met that I wanted, let's be honest, right? James 4. Um, <laughs> I ran to his presence and he gave me a gift. He gave me his heart. You see, I thought that God was calling me to his presence after every one of those things so that he could heal me. But actually, that was that was by the by. What he really wanted to do in those moments is he wanted to take my broken heart and displace it with his. And he said to me, Colette, you know you are fully free when you can love, truly love with my agape love, when it's ugly when you are treated badly, when it is unfair. He said, I want you to get to the place when when somebody does something ugly to you, instead of a triggering resentment and bitterness, it triggers my love. That is the process. And that is the beauty. But we're so quick to just heal it, heal it, heal it. We don't understand that God wants to do more than heal it. He wants to give us more he wants to displace our pain with his power wow. and we can't have power without pain yeah we can't have power without pain you want to walk in the supernatural you want to walk in look at every great man of god look through the old and the new testament you can't have power without pain and you regret your pain you mad at god for your pain you mad at your husband for your pain you mad at your mama for your pain you mad at your abuser for your pain but you don't understand that your pain is the doorway to power because when you can use that pain to plug into the holy spirit he displaces your pain with his power and you get to go and set the other captives free Come on. 
this is that's you got me on my hobby horse it's it's my yeah. fire because it works no. and for those who have the courage for those that have the courage to allow their pain to empower them not only will god heal you but there's no such thing as regret. I thank the Lord that I nearly divorced my husband mm. because I would never love like I do today. Our marriage would not be what it is today. We would not be changing lives like we do today. I thank God I went to 13 schools and could never make friends and always felt lonely and had a major spirit of rejection on me because it made me cling so hard to the edge of his garment. You yeah. see, those who are prophetic are knitted to the heart of Christ hmm. but can we talk about the other side sure if you don't yeah. go through your pain to the power yeah. yeah you're just a bleeding mess you're a bleeding mess if you don't go through that process to the power you're just pain and and the devil breeds in your pain if you don't put a spirit in your pain the devil will help you put a spirit in your pain now, you could have the Holy Spirit resident in your pain and in your trauma. Or you could have a spirit of rejection. You could have all kinds of demonic bondages in that trauma. And that's the problem is that, yes, the gifts and calling are irrevocable. God does call us from our mother's womb. But just because we have a calling doesn't mean we're qualified to heal people. Why? Because we need power from on high. It's not a career choice, guys. I don't go and study at school. Uh, for that level of ministry, it requires us to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit needs to go through the pain, not just heal. It's not even enough to get healing. Mm. You need to allow him to empower you through it. And then when you stand up to minister, that anointing and that power will come through you. Then you're going to minister in inner healing, physical healing. People are going to get spirit filled when you're ministering. Why? Because your pain empowered you. But if you're just sitting in your pain, and using your pain as an excuse to act. You see, I've got to try to find a Christian word here because I've seen some things in the church mm. where you're using your pain in a very nasty way and tucking it under, but I have a calling and you need to understand. Mm. And you misusing your pain to actually nurture your flesh. And let's be honest, we've seen a lot of that in the church yes. of wounded prophets and they mm. misunderstand. They use their pain as a crutch instead of a PowerPoint. Mm. And that causes what? More pain. Hurt people hurt people, right? I'm sure you've yes. seen this plenty, yes. Heidi. And, you know, yes. I know you've worked with so many people that, that have gone through that. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's like, you're like, this is it. Like you totally just brought it back to the, <laughs> the piece of mental health. And some of what I see the, the church can miss. And in my analogy, I'd call it kind of the right brain part of it, which is mm -hmm. our soul, which is our emotions, our feelings. I loved how you said they take the pain and they tuck it. Like, so we have like a preacher, a pastor, somebody who is powerful mm -hmm. and everybody loves and they're <clears> tucking <throat> their pain. And then it comes out yeah. sideways in a scandal and Oh, so many people are hurt and wounded, not just emotionally, but they're, they're wounded spiritually. Mm -hmm. Like we have a lot of people who are hurt from the church because they're ignoring literally what you're talking about. Do you find this? I mean, you can tell, tell me from your experience, but I find that the hardest part working with people is getting them to embrace the reality of their trauma. Mm -hmm. um, for a number of reasons, they feel, yes. and they also uh, misdirect it. Mm -hmm. It's like the, in their minds, they're best able to face the fact or, or lay their trauma on that daddy wasn't there rather than face the reality that their real trauma comes from their mother who was there, a single mom who wasn't coping well, who did what she could, but to be honest, ended up bringing a lot of pain to that child but mm. they feel conflicted with mom that I don't want to face the fact that actually I'm really wounded from some things my mom did to me. So I'm going to blame everything on my absent father. That's the reason for all my, all my faults. And so I find working um, with so many prophetic types, especially is just getting them to face the reality of their trauma. It's like mm -hmm. here in the sunset's free is free indeed, but listen, you've got to know your bound. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but- bringing them to that place of this is a page in my book. Yeah. This, this has made me. This has created something in me, whether good or bad, whether God will use it or not. It, this is me. Mm-hmm. Until you're there, you actually can't go any further. I don't know. You can share from your experience. No, that's such a good point. That's yeah, that that's something that I would I would call it kind of the point of motivation. Like where are they at? Mm-hmm. I'll have some people that they just want to really just want to come to counseling to just feel better. They don't actually want to get better, but they don't know that. And sometimes yeah. it takes counselor after counselor, you know, uh, to finally say, okay, I'm ready. I, you know, my wife left me now, now I got to deal with the trauma of my childhood and they're fine. They're finally realizing it. But what happens is it can be too late for some people where they're so it's never too late, mm. but there's so much damage that's been done to the children, yeah. to the ex-wife and, and to people in their family, because we don't want to face that we actually have trauma. And you were talking mm-hmm. about like a, you know, you want to blame the dad, but it's actually the mom. The, a big thing that I see is that people are very attached to their parent and it's hard for them to recognize that they're, yeah. they love their parent, but they cause damage too. like that. This, mm-hmm. You can honor your parent and you can have trauma from them. Like both can be true and God yeah. can heal it, but you have to be able to reveal it and be able to speak that out. That's probably the most common thing that I see is that people want to protect the abuser, protect the person that hurt them because they don't want to admit that their parents caused that. Yeah. But yet they denied the one thing that has brought them to that place, because if they didn't experience that trauma, they wouldn't have cried out to God. If they hadn't experienced that trauma, they wouldn't have ended up in the place where they are today, where he became their everything. You know, this is one thing that I know I have in common with everybody who's prophetic. Um, If you had ever asked me, why do I love the Lord so much? And listen, it's not because of all the things he's done for me, actually. It's for this one thing is he found me in a pit and he's the only one that saw me there. I was about 12, 13 when my mom left and I was devastated. She just left without a notice and we were looking everywhere for her. And I'll never forget. I was just, I was crying. We were praying, we were pacing. And that's when I had my first encounter with the Lord Jesus. You see, I was just a little girl. I didn't even know how to pray properly. I I didn't know anything about anything. I didn't have any friends. And he found me there. Where did he find me? In my trauma. Where did he find Hagar? In her trauma. Where did he find Sarah? In her trauma. It's Mm -hmm. like we are so quick to want to erase the moments of our life that prepares us and propels us forward for our destiny. That's why I say if we can own it, Mm -hmm. we can also allow the Holy Spirit to empower us through it until it becomes a stepping stone that actually makes us into Mm -hmm. the vessels of healing that as prophets were called to be. Mm. Come on. Thank you for sharing that. Like that, I mean, that is, it, it's painful. And I love that the Lord encountered encountered you in that place of pain. Um, as you were talking, you were talking about how you love the Lord. Um, I feel like there's a lot of people who they're like, I don't know what that means. I don't know that kind mm. of love. Then like, there's there's quite a bit of like lukewarm in the church and even not even knowing what the prophetic is like what is that why would I even why mm. would I even walk through the pain of my trauma I I don't know I'm not one know what that is could you explain that and even because to me this it just found me you know God just got a mm-hmm. hold of me and I'm like learning about all these things <laughs> that I had no idea I mean I didn't even know that it existed in the church I didn't even know about the power but the God did that like God got a hold of me in my pain and showed me that. So can you talk about that? We're in a church dispensation where God is turning the hearts of his children back toward him. We've had a lot of doctrine, a lot of teaching over the years that have taught us righteous living, holiness, what is, what is possible, what is not possible. But what is the one thing God wants more than anything else? What is the one thing that Time and time again, he even said to his people, Israel, your hearts are so far from me. I want your heart, circumcise your 
heart. And so when we look at what's going on in the church, we see a generation whose hearts have not just become cold, but have also become very broken. We, we see a generation that craves so much love. And God is like, I am love. I am the source of love. So God, in his wisdom, says to himself, how can I be the solution to the craving of them? How can I take all the abundance of heaven and the messages of heaven? How can I express the fullness? I mean, just in, just think about it. The, the magnitude of God's loving power is so powerful that Moses could only behold the back of God, the shadow of God that his presence was so strong on the Mount Sinai that the whole mountain shook. Now, listen, if you're already feeling a little bit sensitive, if you have a mountain shaking in front of you, it's going to freak you out. The church is not ready for a shaking mountain. They're not ready. The church isn't ready for a God to show up as fire. And how do I know that? Because the Israelites weren't ready. Why did they say, oh, Moses, uh, we're not ready. I tell you what, you go speak to God and then you come to us and tell us he's too powerful for us. It's too intense. And God wow. knows how fickle we are. We, he knows that there are very few in the church today who are able to stand on the shaking mountain. Mm. But they are. God is raising up those in this era who can stand on that shaking mountain. And what's the purpose of it? To bring the heart down of Christ to his people. And that is why we're seeing a prophetic dispensation because of all things, the purpose of the prophet is to connect God back to his people through the Old Testament. This is a this is a thread all the way from Genesis to Revelation to present day. What is the thread to connection, connection, connect? My people are disconnected. Right. Even all the laws, what were all the laws about? Bringing back connection to stay mm -hmm. connected to him. And so we're in a New Testament dispensation with a head full of knowledge. We know the supernatural and we're seeing an increase in it. But are we really ready as a church for the God who answers by fire when we don't even have a connection to his heart yet? And so what I see is God raising up so many prophetic people to prepare us. There are some of you listening to this. You've been asking God for the supernatural. You're asking questions like, why don't we see the power like we did back then? Why aren't we seeing the smoking mountains? Why aren't we seeing the waters being opened? Because God is waiting for the connection He's waiting for his people to be able to withhold his power. Mm -hmm. But if we don't have connection, we don't have the capacity for his power. You understand? So God's mm -hmm. like, hmm, let me make a plan. What can I do to prepare my people for what's about to come? And so he has raised up everywhere. And, 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 and Heidi, I must tell you um, that Craig and I have been working with such people for the last 26 years, um, we've ministered to, to Catholic nuns and priests who God raised up in the prophetic. Wow. Right within, right wow. within their convents. I, I'm, I'm serious. Um, oh, Presbyterians, right. Baptists, every form of charismatic and Pentecostal. When I say prophetic, I'm not just talking charismatic holy roller here. I'm Come saying on. that there is a revelation yes. flooding through the body, the bride of Christ. Why? Yes. Because God wants a heart connection with his bride. Why does he want the heart connection? Because he wants us to be able to contain the power of heaven and we've got to make connection. So hence the prophetic, we come along, let's bring healing. And who better mm. to help bring that connection than one that has already worked through their own brokenness. Mm. The only reason why you're so able to connect people to heaven, why I know I can connect them to Jesus is because he met me in my brokenness. He led me through. So I've got the map. Now I can go and take people through. And when I do that, it prepares them then for the supernatural, for the fullness, I believe, of heaven that God is yet to release on the earth. Mm -hmm. This is really, really hopeful. Um, as and we're getting closer to the end and I would love for you to pray for us, but I was Absolutely. actually thinking about, um, I was thinking about one friend in particular, and I think that this is something that is common for people that they know that they're prophetic, they've operated in the prophetic, but the wounds are bubbling up and the wounds are like, as you know, cause, cause the Holy Spirit's just like refining them <laughs> struggling with yeah and um 
and I know the answer, I feel like the answer is what you said, which is bring it to God, bring your pain to God. One particular friend I have, um, he's just really, really hopeless. What, what is your advice for those who know that they're prophetic, are called into it, have been operating in it, but have kind of just fallen back a little bit um, and maybe even realizing trauma that they it just feels so big. It feels like a big mm-hmm. mountain. It does. Um, shame is debilitating. What you just described wasn't just hopelessness, it's shame. Shame is debilitating because you're making the mistake of thinking it's dependent on you. Mm. You know, the scripture tells us that we with uh, unveiled face behold Mm. in a mirror the glory of God and so are transformed from glory to glory. The reason why your friend is so overwhelmed with shame and trauma is that he replaced what he's looking at with his own image. Mm. We can get so introspective. We can become so introspective that we we forget. The Lord showed this to me when I was in a similar situation. He stood me in front of a mirror and he said, Colette, look in the mirror. What do you see? I, and then I saw Jesus in the mirror. He said, look into my eyes. For as long as you look into my eyes, the Holy Spirit will come and shape you into his image. And I saw the Holy Spirit came on me from behind and began molding me like I was clay. And then I saw the the image shift. I saw suddenly I blinked and I saw myself and my mistakes and my weakness, my insecurity, my, my fears. And the shaping stopped and the enemy came and started shaping me according to my trauma. Wow. And the Lord said to me, with an open face, behold the image of me, not the image of you, not the image of your brokenness. We Mm. cannot heal ourselves, guys. Mm. We cannot heal ourselves. Mm. We didn't break ourselves. So we cannot heal ourselves. (laughs) It takes a spiritual power, okay? And that (laughs) spiritual power is found in the blood of Christ. And when somebody is hopeless like that, you just told me he took his eyes off Jesus. This man needs to go and have a retreat and get face to face with Jesus again. So he begins seeing himself through the eyes of Christ. He's Mm -hmm. seeing himself through the eyes of the world. He's seeing Mm -hmm. himself through the eyes of there's a leader who's rejected him, actually, that pulled it out. So he's viewing himself through the mindsets of others. But what Mm -hmm. he's not seeing is himself through the eyes of Christ. So it's not enough to just bring your trauma to Jesus. No. How about we just stop for a second? And stare in that mirror into the eyes of Jesus, the lover of your soul. That moment where he picked you up for the first time and he was all that you saw. Get back to that. Mm. You'll be amazed how very quickly your trauma and the mountain of hopelessness disappears in the face of hope. Mm. But you can't keep viewing yourself through your mistakes. And through the disappointments of others. Otherwise, you bury yourself. You bury yourself. Get back to seeing yourself through the eyes of Christ. Amazing. Thank you so much for this. Is there anything that you feel like you haven't said that wanted that you wanted to say? I just can't emphasize enough that this may be an unpopular view for some. But there are some wounds that the Lord may not want to heal right now because you're still in process. Mm -hmm. There are some wounds. You know, John the Baptist, he wore camel hair. How foolish. Why did he wound himself on purpose? Why did he chafe himself on purpose? Have you ever really had bad chafing on your skin? You can't even put a lotion on that and it stings like crazy, right? So why would John the Baptist put himself through that wounding? Because it maintained a character in him that prepared the way for the Lord. And Mm. his mandate, what God had put him on this earth to do, was more important than how he felt. And start thanking God for your trauma. You really want a breakthrough? You really want a breakthrough? In all things, in all things, we praise the Lord. Because whether it was fair, whether it was ugly, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like leaving my trauma in the devil's hand. 
Come on. You see, every time, every time that I have a long story about how bad things were, I feel like I'm giving glory to the devil. Mm. Yeah. But when I praise God for my trauma, I take the ugly that Satan tried to destroy me with mm. and I put it in the hand of God. And I say, you sort it. I can't mm. fix myself. So mm. if there's one thing that I would leave this audience with is what I call the praise project. Mm. It's a very simple praise project. You just go through everything bad that ever happened to you and you praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that this happened. It's hard. Listen, it's, it sounds like it would be easy. I can make the list. This abuse, that, that molestation. I mean, it gets ugly. And, and I'm not just telling you to forgive. You've done that. Come on. How many times you forgive and forgive and forgive and you still feel broken a hundred pieces. Good, yes. praise God. Put yes. your trauma in your hand. When you praise him, you're not saying um, that it was good that happened to you. You're not saying that. What you're saying is I'm tired of the devil owning my trauma. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to let God take control. Thank yeah. you, Father, that this happened. Thank you that it shaped me into the vessel that I am today for your glory and that all things will work together for good. In Jesus' name, it will set you free. Come on, Colette. Like this is, <laughs> this is like, all this is like, so, so good. Well, I would love it if you could pray for us. Like absolutely feel Holy spirit leading just very yeah. good. All right. The first thing I see is there's a lot of you who are still in the wilderness and, um, God wants to give you an encounter. He's about to open the door for the end of your wilderness season. But before he does, you know, you feel like Jesus, he's been in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and you have like no food and the enemy's been buffeting you. But don't forget that he had an encounter before he went in and then he had an angelic encounter afterwards. And he came out of that desert, powerful and strong, calling his disciples and performing his first miracle. So that means he was empowered. We don't read of a miracle before then. He was empowered through his encounter in the wilderness, right? We would think that he was empowered um, just at the dedication where the dove came on him. So the Holy Spirit acknowledged him, but we don't see him performing any miracles in the wilderness other than of course, surviving a 40 day fast. But we see the miracles after he made it through and had his angelic encounter. And that's mm. what you've been waiting for. You've been whining and saying to the Lord, Lord, why am I still in this wilderness? Lord, why aren't you talking to me? The Lord said, because I want to bring you to an encounter to empower you to send you back. Hmm. That you have to come to peace and you have to overcome the devil. You have to resist his temptation and bind him and put him under your feet. And if you can overcome the devil, if you can come face to face with Satan and say, in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. You will not overcome me satan be gone you will have your encounter mm. no god's not going to come and take the devil away for you you have the word of life on your top in the name of jesus i come against every one of these attacks stand up as i'm praying and you're listening to this i want you to stand up against the devil in your life what is the devil that you're facing is it abuse? Is it attack? Is it finances? Is it, is it your husband? Is it your wife? Is it your kids? Is it your coworkers? What is the devil in your life that's coming against you? And you keep responding in the flesh. You keep responding through your trauma. But at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow now. Now you're going to use a sword of the spirit, not an arm of the flesh. And I want you to see that. I want you to see the attack. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, with principalities and powers and rulers. All right. I don't want you to see the person. I want you to see the devil behind the person because we're not going to be going binding people here. Please let me make that clear. You're binding the work of the enemy. Okay. And I want you to say in the name of Jesus, you will bow. You will bow and you will be silenced in Jesus name. I am not bowing to you anymore. And Holy Spirit, I pray for your encounter. As they face the enemy, even now, I call for your fire to wash over each one. Wash over their minds. I speak clarity and every bit of trauma that they've experienced, every bit of imbalance, chemical imbalance in their brain that has caused them to over, to be overstimulated and to see more pain than that what there really is. There's, there's people listening to this and they have they actually have chemical imbalances that even though they get a small rejection, it's like it feels so much more intense 
and you've gone for deliverance after deliverance but it's actually a physical thing <laughs> and the lord says receive your healing i speak your healing holy spirit i thank you that you restore their brains in jesus name now i send that fire now to bring balance to their understanding to bring balance to the way that they think i call those pathways clear in jesus name that they th- thought processes begin to speed up now and they see and understand as they never have before every damage in Jesus name is removed now thank you father there's some that are even suffering with slight autism i rebuke that spirit in Jesus name and i call healing to your mind and your understanding in Jesus name hmm thank you holy spirit i thank you that you lead your people through and for those of you that are called to the prophetic and you're too afraid to step up. I see there's this one uh woman in particular. She's got um really dark hair. Um actually she's uh she looks like she she may be Indian from from her complexion and she feels very small. You are like the smallest in your family. You feel very small about yourself and the hand of God's come on you and he's calling you and you're saying, "I know I I don't have a voice. This isn't for me." The Lord says, "I've given you a voice to speak." step out from under those that oppress you it's time for me to use you step out i speak boldness into your life now in the name of jesus come out of hiding come out of hiding now <laughs> and find your voice now just speak the the blessing of the lord on you in your head his hand on you now in jesus name thank you holy spirit and father even as i'm here with heidi who's opened her doors to me and and been so generous in having me speak into the life of her listeners i also speak your abundant blessing that you would use everything that she is doing to open up all these doors to the nations that i see you're going to be traveling heidi i see the lord open you're going to actually be going on mission trips i see the lord opening up doors to other nations and so even though some doors are shut some others are open because you're going to take your message to the nations to those that and they're actually poor nations they're not very very affluent nations but you're going to bring healing there in places where they've never heard what it is that you have to teach them. And I just speak your blessing. Thank you Holy Spirit on each one. Healing to their minds, restoring of their souls, and a stirring up of the prophetic inside each one in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So how can people get a hold of you and learn more from you and I know that you have some amazing <laughs> classes people can take and books that they can buy how can how can they get a hold of you At the moment what I'm doing is uh, all find on myapostolicmentor.com The Lord has me consulting and coaching at the moment especially those that are called to be authors now that could be authors of a podcast author of a book author of a website um authors are, are not are, don't just write authors are originators the lord's raising up a lot of creatives in in this hour and um with it actually comes a lot of emotional swinging and also having a hard time focusing your message remember how long it took us to learn to focus our message on our podcast <laughs> under dr <laughs> green well i realized that all of us creators have a hard time so i spend a lot of our uh, one on one mentoring <clears throat> helping them embrace who God's called them to be and then learning to put it on a page and i must tell you something Heidi there's one topic that i teach my authors that is not a very popular one i tell them to bleed on the page Come i on. actually tell them that some author if you're called to be an author sometimes god won't heal you on purpose i got a lot of pushback for that but i say but listen if you read david if you read moses if you read jeremiah we see very mm-hmm. broken and they wrote Uh, yes. and Paul too they wrote most of yes. our bible and it's because mm-hmm. their pain was so raw that they mm-hmm. could put it on the page for us to feel today and yeah. for authors sometimes god will delay your healing so that you can bleed on the page and as you bleed on the page the healing comes through the bleeding <laughs> and so i just found it so timely that you had me on here because this is something i'm taking my apprentices through at the moment i'm absolutely sending them to your podcast because it will help them to understand exactly what they're going through and why sometimes God waits a while to heal you because even even all that brokenness has purpose and mm-hmm. it's it can be something beautiful even though it doesn't feel like it in the moment. Amen. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to actually just share what your other 
pot, your other website is as well, if that's okay. Absolutely. Um, it's, I'm going to just spell it out. It's www.toach-ministries.com, toachministries.com. They do also have a podcast as well as yes. YouTube and um, all sorts of platforms. So make sure to check out Colette and her husband. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Heidi.